This episode is sponsored by State Farm. Choices are great. Like with your podcasts, you get to choose what you want to listen to. And State Farm believes insurance should work the same way. That's why the State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you get the coverage you want at an affordable price and a policy that helps cover what you value most. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com today to create your State Farm Personal Price Plan. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy. Available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. Welcome to the family here on Purple Mafia. I am your host, Peldino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Purple Mafia is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podman, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Audible, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you once and always for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today, as the Minnesota Vikings will not be hiring Jim Harbaugh, of course. They will be hiring, or at least I believe they'll be hiring, Kevin O'Connell, Los Angeles Rams Offensive Coordinator. So in a lot of ways today, it'll be the Kevin O'Connell show. Uh, There's a reason why the show wasn't released on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, this and that. Wednesday, there just wasn't enough time. And of course, you know, when I get home from work, the woman upstairs is very like yeah anal about not making any sound and the insulation in this apartment is ridiculous so it is what it is um (laughs) and then thursday morning brave the wild friday morning timberwolves explosion so here i am today with purple mafia talking about kevin o'connell and heck he's not official yet anyway so what if what if what if he gets uh, cold feet huh what if jim harbaugh gets cold feet what if the vikings get cold feet yeah it's cold feet cold feet cold feet so wednesday of course everything kind of Started out interesting. It was Jim Harbaugh day. He was coming to sign a contract. He believed that. I believe that. A lot of the local media believe that. A lot of people in the national media believe that. And then it just dragged and dragged. And it's like, okay, nothing's going on. Why is nothing happening? And then it's like, uh, why do I have a why do I have a thinking feeling this is just not going to happen? After all that, Jim Harbaugh's coming to Minnesota. He's in town. He's talking and talking and talking, and they're like questioning the whole situation with San Francisco, this and that. And then there's little little blips coming out around, you know, early afternoon, two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, Twin Cities time, Central time, of course. Uh, you know that at least one Minnesota Vikings official is having doubts about Jim Harbaugh. And then it just kind of kept going. There's nothing happening, nothing happening, no tweets. Keep, keep checking Twitter, John Grzynski, blah, 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 Darren Doogie Wolfson, this and that, guys like that, Adam Schefter, all these guys. And then it's like, still nothing. Huh, Arif Hassan, still nothing. Okay, what's going on here? And then, bam, Adam Schefter around six-ish, uh, Jim Harbaugh. <clears throat> calls Michigan saying he's going back to Michigan. He's going to be back as the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. And then next thing you know, Kevin O'Connell is expected to be hired by the Minnesota Vikings. It was basically right around the same time. Uh, he was pretty much the other finalist. They blew him away, or he blew them away anyway. Uh, Patrick was also, uh, Patrick Graham was also the uh, somebody that they really liked. They really were impressed but Kevin O'Connell apparently was the one that blew them away the most. Um, Patrick Graham. I almost called him Patrick Grant. That's where I was going crazy <laughs> here for a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. Patrick Grant actually comments at Purple Mafia. I'm like, no, no, Patrick Graham, defensive coordinator of the New York Giants, which kind of scared a lot of people away because who wants to touch the New York Giants anything right now? I mean, it's it's terrible. The New York Giants are like the worst. Who, who, who wants to touch them? I sure don't. Um, Jim Harbaugh, again, it was a very interesting... <clears throat> possibility and the argument from the Dan Barreros and other local media and national media would say okay well here we go again Minnesota you know not ready for the big time again you know we're going to get soft we're going to get scared because this guy is maybe not you know he's not the most kosher guy in the history of the world 
He's he's rough around the edges. He's a little weird. But his win-loss record is absolutely nuts. Everywhere he's gone. Everywhere Jim Harbaugh has gone. But then, you know, then we hire Kevin O'Connell instead. Or at least we're, at least we think we're hiring him. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, of course, quarterback of the Chicago Bears and the infamous uh, situation in 92 where Mr. Mike Ditka in his final season as head coach of the Bears because they finished 5-11. and 11. They were awful. Um, gave Jim Harbaugh an airfall on the sidelines, embarrassed him on national television, if I remember correctly. And then he became captain comeback with the Indianapolis Colts, 94-97. to The 95 Colts almost went to the Super Bowl with a 9-7 and record. Jim Harbaugh heaved that ball into the end zone. It looked like the, uh, I believe it was the Indianapolis tight end had caught the ball. Apparently not. And Harbaugh was just had this look on his face with the messy hair from the helmet and everything. was like, he caught it. He caught it. And the Colts would have been in the Super Bowl. And apparently it was called incomplete, the Hail Mary pass from Jim Harbaugh. Pittsburgh Steelers went to the Super Bowl and lost in heartbreaking fashion as Joe, uh, uh, Mr. O'Donnell would throw multiple interceptions that just stunned us. It felt like in uh, almost on purpose. Uh, O'Donnell of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Stunning. Uh, absolutely stunning. I thought for sure Pittsburgh was going to win that game, and I was really cheering for it. It was the best Super Bowl in many years because, like, going back to, it was probably the best Super Bowl since the 88, the 88 one with the Bengals and the San Francisco 49ers. It was probably the best Super Bowl since that game, 1988, where Montana had to drive the team down the field, blah, 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 blah. Hopefully it's the Bengals winning this time because it's not the 49ers either. Come on, Bengals, go get them. <laughs> um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, was it uh, the, oh, no, the Giants and Bills. What am I talking about? That one came literally down to the final kick in the game. So it was the best since that game. Yeah, because 89, uh, the 89 seasons Super Bowl, San Francisco, Denver was a joke. Absolute joke. 91, which was, you know, 92 January here in Minneapolis, whatever. Yeah, and the Metrodome was lousy. It was boring. The next year was the blowout of blowouts. And the next year was uh, Buffalo was actually leading at the half, and then Dallas scored like a million points in the second half. It was just lame. San Francisco embarrassed San Francisco, San Diego. And then finally had Dallas Pittsburgh, which was much better. Why am I blabbing about that? Apologize. All because of this Colts thing. Come on, Jim Harbaugh, you and your captain comeback deal. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh played for the 98 Baltimore Ravens. I remember that a bit. I believe he was backing up um, the other guy. Uh, the Cleveland, the former, yeah, former Cleveland Browns quarterback, uh, Vinny Testaverde, uh, yep, who was all over the place. San Diego Chargers, ninety-nine to two thousand. Must have been, uh, yep. <clears throat> and then Detroit Lions was like kind of like a practice squad member, and two thousand two thousand one, but also wound up with Carolina for a minute. Jim Harbaugh, obviously that's his playing career. Why did I get into that so long? Uh, was quarterback's coach during the 2002 season where they went to the Super Bowl only to lose to the Tampa Bay Bleeps. No, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Quarterback's coach with that club with, uh, of course, the MVP of the league. So that kind of helps. <laughs> A guy by the name of Rich Gannon, the league MVP that year. Rich Gannon, former Viking quarterback 10 years earlier. It's just crazy. He was an MVP. San Diego head, uh, San Diego College head coach, San Diego University, <clears throat> this and that. I'm talking about Harbaugh too much, but it's just, yeah, and then major success at Stanford, a lot of fun with San Francisco, the infamous uh, the game and <laughs> the fun game with Ponder where it looked like we might have a quarterback of the future and blah, 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 and he's been with Michigan ever since. We were all excited, thinking we were going to get him. And, of course, his NFL record, Jim Harbaugh, is 49-22-1. He did tie a game in college. He's 700-119-51 throughout his uh, career. So, obviously, he's been a fantastic winner. It just kind of surprised us a bit that uh, this whole thing kind of blew, uh, blew up in his face, I guess, this and that. They just, I don't know, like Harbaugh must be more in a win-now mode, and hopefully, I'm actually hoping, I'm actually hoping that that's the reason, that Harbaugh's in win-now mode, and he probably is, and that the Vikings staff, Cam, as people like to call him, Questy, Quesi Adolfo Mensa is more like, um, no, not right now. And Kirk Cousins, we're probably going to try to move on here because the cap hit is ridiculous. You, you can't build a team around a uh, $45 million cap hit. So hopefully that's part of the reason why this didn't work out. Because, I mean, Jiminy Christmas. But again, who brought Jim Harbaugh to the table? Quesi Adolfo Mensa. Or let's just call him Quesi. Or just Mensa. Let's call him Quesi. Uh, when they have a unique name like that, 
it's more interesting than just saying Mensa. Uh, so <clears throat> at the end of the day, Kwesi did bring Jim Harbaugh into the mix along with uh, Patrick Graham. But uh, Kevin O'Connell apparently was of interest with both sides. Uh, that's kind of the friendly medium that's in that at the end of the day. So maybe you're centered on the friendly medium. Maybe he just is the right guy all along. It does say that they blew him away. That's the conversation in the background. So your new head coach, Kevin O'Connell, is now in the house. Of course, he was in the Sean McVay coaching tree. He was a coach of the Redskins who was with Sean McVay. Sean McVay, offensive coordinator of the Redskins years ago. It's been a while now. Kevin O'Connell ultimately, yep, um, quarterbacks coach with Kirk Cousins. We'll see what that means with the, with the Washington Redskins, which they were named at the time. Now they're the Washington Commanders. Commander Data. Commander Rika. Okay, yep, Commanders. They're the Commanders. Yeah, that's John luc Picard's yeah, accent and voice and stuff. Uh, Kevin O'Connell, of course, also was a quarterback in the NFL, New England Patriots, third stringer. And he was the backup in 2008 behind Matt Castle. Immediately went to Detroit, who I guess he was just kind of part of the scenery. New York Jets, which, yeah, I don't know about the Jets either. 2009, 2010, but they were actually good in those years. They were actually pretty good, especially 2009. They went to the AFC title game. Multiple seasons of the Jets were uh, the runners-up in the AFC when the Vikings were runners-up in the NFC. Why that is, I don't know. Also an honorary member of the Dolphins, you know what I mean, off-season and or practice squad member only. And then he was with the Jets still in 2011. And the San Diego Chargers, kind of more in the background again in 2012. Ultimately, he's like, okay, fine, I'll be a damn coach since I can't, since you're not going to let me play, you jackasses. Just kidding. San Diego State, 2008. Yeah, rolls right off your tongue. Third round pick in the draft. Kirk Cousins was actually slightly later. It wasn't even like a fourth round pick, so... <laughs> that's kind of weird. So uh, they must have had some hope for him, did the uh, Patriots. 94th pick overall. Interesting. Uh, he is from, well, it, the school was in California. But uh, he actually, yeah, his high school was also in California. Carlsbad, California. La Costa Canyon. La Costa Canyon. He is six foot five, 220. He's a big, he's a big mamma jamma. Born in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, pretty cool, though. Kevin O'Connell sounds like somebody that probably grew up in California more than uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. I didn't really catch that much of an accent, but maybe a little bit. Um, 36 years of age, May 25th. I know I'm not like the college coach. It's, yeah, the new coach of LSU trying to be Southern. I'm just having fun, I guess, or at least an attempt at it. Uh, but Kevin O'Connell, quarterback's coach of the Cleveland Browns, 2015, San Francisco 49ers, I believe. Yep, the yep, Quessy was still there uh, at the time, so that's where the connection is. 2016, Quessy joined Cleveland a couple of years later, 2018. Um, special projects, whatever that means. San Francisco 49ers, 2016. So I guess he was working, maybe he was working directly with Quessy in the background. Those guys were kind of, you know, working on special projects. Okay, special projects such as, such as cleaning Microsoft services, or, uh, you know, something like that, or uh, creating graphic design, or I I have no idea. It's just stuff. <laughs> Washington Redskins, 2017 with Kirk Bleeping Cousins, quarterbacks coach and passing game coordinator. Ooh, yeah. So it's kind of like in between there. It's, you know, you're not a supervisor, and you're not a, you're, but you're not a lead trainer either. You're, you're a line flow. So you're a line flow coordinator. All right. Something like that. 2018. 2019 offensive coordinator of the Washington Commander football team of 2019 and the Los Angeles Rams in 2020 and through the present as he is the Los Angeles Rams offensive coordinator. The colors still match the Los Angeles Rams because they have one more game to play where, sorry, sorry, Kevin O'Connell, I'm on the other side. But this is the last time we'll be cheering against you, Kevin. Unless you wind up not being the Vikings coach for much long, uh, for a very long period of time, but this will be the last time, Kevin. I'll be cheering against you. So um, obviously, you see what the LA Rams offense can do. You see him utilizing the talent of that team. Uh, obviously, uh, because here's the thing: you might there is always the argument. Well, you got all this talent, blah blah blah. Fine, anybody's going to look good with that. Not necessarily. Take a look at the Vikings offensive coordinator and the head coach. What did they do with all the talent? <laughs> Crickets, anyone? Crickets? Hello, 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 hello. So there is the other side of it. 
Yes, yes, it's easy having all this talent. It makes you look it makes you look way better than you are. Who cares? This and that. But uh, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it works out. And he must be doing something right, even if he doesn't call the plays, because uh, neither did Zach Taylor of Cincinnati, of course. Some coaching trees work, some don't. This one so far has worked. So, Kevin, please, please be a good piece of the coaching tree, for the love of God, because we would really like a nice offensive head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. With this offense, with this talent, it could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun. And it's just ironic how <laughs> Kyle Shanahan with, you know, it's just ironic. It's one of the best defenses in the NFL, and the offense is like, you know, they got like 80 yards or something. I mean, it's just like, ugh. But it does, that's, a, that's a situation where he got everything he could get out of it because uh, because uh, Jimmy Garoppolo sucks. Yeah. Even though he wins games, he sucks. He's really ugly at doing it. Kind of like Mike Zim. <clears throat> kind of like that guy. That guy that doesn't like uh, doesn't like quarterbacks and kickers very much. He doesn't like quarterbacks or kickers. That's that's a great head coach right there. Excellent. Excellent head coach. I hate quarterbacks and kickers. That makes perfect sense. I might as well go to, you know, to go to my job and say, I psh, I hate microscopes. Yeah, they'd be like, you know, when people say that, I just want to slap them in the face. Get the hell out of here. You, <laughs> you applied for the job. It says it right on there. So, yeah, stuff like that makes you kind of, it just makes you cringe. I, I hate quarterbacks and kickers. Get the hell out of my office. I, I see them every day. I see them every day. Yeah. And what more do you want from me? I don't care. Get out of here. Oh, Kevin. Oh, uh, Kevin. Now, that was Mike Zimmer. And, of course, Kevin O'Connell, though, I, I have hopes, sure. And I was, in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking, oh, what if he ends up being something? And then, you know, Harbaugh is good for a little while, and then he blows up. You know, just like every other Minnesota, you know, go for the throat, you know, so to speak, win now approach. You know, Brett Favre was awesome for one year. The second year, he didn't want to be here anymore. He didn't want to play football anymore. He wasn't personal. He was just the way it was. He didn't want to play anymore. So, ah, I don't want to play. Okay, fine. I'll, so you, you say you're offering $20 million? Okay, okay, fine. One more year. Oh, shit. That was a mistake. Okay, sorry. Sorry for the French there. But that's kind of basically what happened in 2010. That's kind of what happened in 2010. It was kind of a joke. And back then, $20 million was about what Kirk Cousins was like about $40 million, You know? <laughs> back then it was. Even though... Yeah, even though it wasn't, it just was, that kind of thing. Because it was, you know, about the top there was in the league at the time. And now things got really psycho the last five years or so with uh, contract salaries. Oh, I mean, <laughs> $20 million was pretty crazy for a single year in, tw in 2010. But uh, the cap hit for Kirk Cousins. I'm hoping, I'm praying that the uh, approach going forward is if you're going to keep the son of a gun, the uh, you know, restructure it to a point that it's way down. And I mean way down. Somehow, some way, there has to be a way to fix this thing where there is never, you're never going to have like $40 million cap hits anymore from your quarterback because you cannot win a championship that way. You, you can't, especially when he's not a top two or three quarterback in, on the planet because he's not even close, him being Kirk Cousins. He's, he's fine. He puts up nice stats. But there's plenty of players out there that can win you fantasy football championships. It will never come close, or, or other fantasy sports, but will never come close to bringing you to, you to a championship. Plenty. There's plenty of good box scores out there. Just look at his numbers. Yes, look at his numbers. They're fine. But why aren't we winning? Why aren't we winning? Is it because jo Justin Jefferson sucks? Is it just because automatically the offensive line sucks? May I, may I say again? May I say again? What would happen... What would happen if Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings or Kirk Cousins and the Cincinnati Bengals went into uh, Tennessee, of all places, and Kirk Cousins was sacked nine times? What do you think would have happened? Just just tell me what would have happened if Kirk Cousins got sacked nine times in Tennessee in a playoff game. Or let's say we go to, uh, you know, San Francisco, round two. Kind of like that. That really good defense. What happened? What happened? Tell me what happened. It's like picking up a lion and saying, oh, nothing will happen. That's about what it was like. It just didn't work. Um, he, he doesn't have the same response that a Joe Burrow had. Ah, oh, Kirk. You know, with all your durability and all that, all, all your durability and your special skills, especially with your accuracy and your, and your throwing arm and your deep accuracy, why can't you have it a little teeny bit better between the ears? Doggone it. A guy 
Joe Burrow had an ACL right away as a rookie. Well, like 10 games into his rookie year. 9, 10 games, I believe they were 2-7, and seven, so that would be 9 games into his rookie year as an ACL. But what's the other thing Joe Burrow has that Kirk Cousins doesn't have? A national championship. What's another thing Joe Burrow already has that <laughs> Kirk Cousins isn't even close to? He has an AFC championship and just might have a Super Bowl championship as well. So, I mean, it's things like that. Um, I don't want $45 million of the salary cap going to Kirk Cousins unless it's a one-and-done thing. Like, okay, just just, just indulge it for one year. Just just survive. Get get through it, kind of like the Minnesota Wild with Zach Parise and uh, uh, Ryan Suter, how they had no choice because uh, for 13, 13 year contracts. 13-year contracts. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. So when you buy people out, you know, it lasts longer than ever, and the cap hit is still there, even though it might be stretched out an extra couple of years, but it's still there, and it's still going to affect you. So do the Vikings just say, fine, bleep it, we're going we're gonna to suffer through this $45 million cap hit, and then we'll let him go. And by the way, we have Joe Q, quarterback of the future, whether it's Cal and Mond, which I doubt, but it's possible, um, or the next guy. There it be Willis. There it be the young man Willis with all that mobility. Um, Joe Burrow again was sacked nine times. I'm just going to say it again. He was sacked nine times by the, by the Tennessee Titans. Kirk Cousins, we would have been blown to bits in that game if Kirk Cousins was sacked nine times. It's just a fact. It's not because I'm anti-Vikings. It's not because I'm just here to bash and curse and, and, and attack. Just facts speak for themselves, folks. Facts speak for themselves. And with the offensive coordinator and head coach that we had to go along with that, what, what, whatever, man, whatever. <laughs> That's all I got to say, whatever. You really think we would have beaten the Tennessee Titans in that game? Because Joe Burrow didn't exactly have the greatest pass protection in the history of mankind if he was sacked nine freaking times. And he's more mobile than Kirk Cousins. And he was sacked nine times. That's a lot. <laughs> that kind of stuff really impresses me as a as a fan of football when it comes to some a certain some young quarterback winning that game and then beating a team that's a lot of people have looked at as the next dynasty in football where i think the, i think the chances of them being the next dynasty now have been pushed aside by maybe Cincinnati <clears throat> but we'll see or the freaking rams for a short time it's not going to last that long kevin o'connell welcome to minnesota i know i'm kind of bouncing all over it <laughs> with all these other thoughts um I'm I'm happy to have him. I'm encouraged. I'm optimistic. What have we wanted the last year or the last two years? Him easily the last two years for all of us that were chanting "fire Zim" in 2020, and for all of us that were hoping that maybe just maybe the Vikings would just say "screw it" and move on in 2019 before the Vikings won the uh, game in New Orleans, the New Orleans miracle. No, the the deep pass and then the slight push off by Kyle Rudolph. <clears throat> slight push off. And the uh, Vikings win on the road there. Um, that Zimmer got his three-year extension. For all of us hoping and praying we could move on, what did we want? We wanted a guy who was under 40 who would be an offensive whiz, so to speak. An offensive coordinator who was under 40. Well, we got him. And it's with a very glitzy team that is in the Super Bowl today. They're in the Super Bowl a, a, a week from today. Maybe they're going to be the runner-up, but one way or another, they won the NFC. And, and they had to earn it, and they got it. They got the job done. They got past the world champion Tampa Bay Bucks, and they got past one of the best defenses on the planet. Of course, they probably still should have lost that game, but uh, I don't think it's Kevin O'Connell's fault that Mr. Matthew Stafford threw the ball right into the uh, 49er safety's like, lap, right into his chest, and the guy still dropped the ball. I'm not bitter about that at all. Just a little. Maybe a little, but we got the young offensive mind, most likely anyway, because it's not official, but we have the young offensive mind in tow. It's going to be cool to hear what he has to say, and it's going to be fascinating to see what the vision is moving forward. So, I mean, it's going to be nice to see, hopefully. I mean, that, that's the one thing we the one thing we don't have going for us is the number one pick in the draft and or, you know, a spectacular quarterback waiting for us with the number one pick in the draft. <laughs> they don't always work out, but occasionally they do. But the good news is you don't have to pick number one overall to find the next superstar quarterback. You don't have to. You know, Russell Wilson was taken in the third round. Tom Brady was taken in the sixth. 
Kirk, uh, yeah, Kirk Cousins. Well, other quarterbacks have not been taken in the first round or maybe later in the first round, and they still wound up being great, like Patrick Mahomes, who didn't go number one. He went like 10th. So things happen. Things happen. Mitchell Trubisky, Patrick Mahomes. Hmm. Hmm. Gee, I can't imagine, can't imagine that one. <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky, you can't even start. In a, yeah, he's not even a starter. So, um, again, very encouraged, very intrigued with Kevin O'Connell moving forward. Kevin O'Connell, it'll be happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay, sorry. I'm One way or another, I'm very happy to have him. He is 36, born May 25th, 1985. The good old days when I was a youngster. Uh, I was leaving preschool around that time. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I was leaving preschool. Beautiful, beautiful weather. I still remember. And then going into kindergarten, 85, 86, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm a few years older than Kevin O'Connell. It's about time the Vikings had a coach younger than me. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, that's the crappy part. I don't think there's ever going to be another Viking coach older than me, except maybe, you know, assistants. Who's going to be the assistant, this and that? Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll get further and further into that in the future. It's just, it's nice to have an offensive vision going forward. And it's going to be fascinating to see what the moves are. With that, let's. Uh, I'm going to. I think I'm going to keep this into. Um, I'm going to keep this into. Uh, I'm going to keep this into one segment. Why the heck not? I was kind of wavering back and forth on it. There's no call in. There's no. Um, there's you know there's, there's there's there there is fan interaction. Might as well just jump into it. This is a one shot dealy, and I did. Uh, post out that um, I'm putting out an open invitation to anybody that wants to create a new Pearl Mafia logo. Make note, the idea is to not have the Minnesota Vikings logo on it anymore. Uh, so that's the whole thing there. I believe I had a retweet. A couple of likes. That's nice. Black Space and Levi. Ooh, Levi, who readjusted the, uh, in case he's listening, who readjusted the uh, logo for Timberwolves Explosion, the size so it could fit into HipCast, and then Brave the Wild twice, because there were two... Uh, uh, incarnations of the new Brave the Wild logo. Ultimately, again, we got rid of the Minnesota Wild logo in that one, but a much better, more interesting logo than what had been on there before, despite the fact that logo lasted almost 14 years. Pretty impressive. Uh, Black Space, let's get to Twitter, at Purple Mafia Show, at Purple Mafia Show. When's the next episode? Right now, Sebastian, right now. Black Space, Sebastian. God, Sex, and Sin, God, Sex, and Sin podcast. I believe it's just God, Sex, Sin, but I think we throw out the and in there. Uh, wow, that you know it is such a good show, and I'm going to encourage you to listen to it. You, you can open. I mean, he opens a vein on there, in a lot of ways, without giving up too much information from his life, but at the same time, experiences and the advice he gives for someone his age is really an impressive thing. Um, really impressive by Sebastian Barton, out of Mankato, Minnesota, Minnesota. Black Space 999. Highly, highly recommended. God, Sex, and Sin podcast. Uh, look it up on all the same applications. He uses Anchor as well, which I might get interested more and more into. Um, I probably, uh, but, I mean, I'm happy with Hipcast for the most part, but sometimes, man, sometimes the download speed from that place is like, it's like they, it's like they started it in 1999, and it's still in 1999, or 2001, whatever. Or like early 2000s when podcasts finally uh, went fire, uh, they, they came onto the planet here. Dave Hickey out of Iowa says, yep, I was talking about Joe Burrow saying the next Tom Brady <sighs> passing uh, passing the torch just in time. So like Brady retired just in time for Joe Burrow to kind of uh, come out of that shadow. Montana in 1981 in his second year. Tom Brady in his second year in 2001. Joe Burrow, two. 2021 in his second year. Just think about it. Second year, second year, second year. 81. 2001. 2021 or 2021. Whatever you want to call it. Think about that though. It's 20 year spans and all guys in their second year. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? So if Cincinnati wins the championship, how freaking cool is that? I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> and there might be a youngster who's just being born right now who will be the guy that will replace Joe Burrow as the next great quarterback in 2041. I shudder at the thought of how long ago that is, or how, how far away that is from now, how long in the future that is, and how old I'm going to be. I shudder at that thought, but it is what it is. Um, gosh, how old will I be? 42, 62. Yuck. 
yuck. But hey, so be it. You know, and if guys are out there playing well, and if Joe Burrow helps Cincinnati become something special, good for him. It's about time the city of Cincinnati got another title. Um, let's get to what Dave Hickey said. I don't know how this keeps happening, but it's like I bump the mouse and then it pops up another tab, and it's annoying as hell. Dave Hickey says he's just become that being uh, him being Joe Burrow. He's just become the new face of the next generation of NFL football. He's got the looks, the swagger, and the game. Amen. Amen. 100% on that one. Amen. 100%. That's the end of Twitter, Facebook page. Um, let's see what's going on here. Apologize for the delay. Facebook.com forward slash Brutal Mafia Show. Facebook.com forward slash Brutal Mafia Show. Might as well bring up Vigit really quick. The Vigit application, V-I-G-I-T. It is a application or app, which a lot of you like would rather say. On Android or Apple devices, of course, it's two separate words, V-I-G-I-T. Uh, it is basically fantasy sports betting. Fantasy sports betting. Social media for sports bettors. You can post about your picks, see what others are saying about games. Vigit Betting League is a month-long betting competition to see who the best sports better is over the course of a month. Free to play sports book. Bet free coins. Win real prizes. It just rolls right off your tongue, doesn't it? Betting stats. There's great information available on the Vigit Like Line movement where the public is betting. So you can use it as a cheat sheet as well. It is, again, fantasy sports betting. You're not using real money. But you can use it as a cheat sheet as well if you are betting this and that. And it's fun. You know, it's fun to compete against other people. Uh, the Crypto.com application, Crypto.com, it is an app. It is not a website. It's an app. Open it up. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what you want to do is click on the link in the show description. It will show that I referred you. If you do click on that link, it'll put me as a referral and it'll help the show and put $25 in your account to start trading cryptocurrency. So why the heck not? Jump on board Crypto.com app. App. Okay. Um, so, what's next? Let's get to actual the actual Facebook page here. So we're trying to pick up from where we last left off. It's just not responding like the way I'd like it to. Was there any comments on the... Mo Why is this doing this? Was there any comments on the most recent page? The most recent post? Yes, there was. Gerald Spring says, awesome. Of course, that was the conversation about Quessy and Championship Sunday. From Judd Zolga, the run-up is Kevin O'Connell emerging. It's a favorite to get the Vikings head coaching job. This was actually before the Harbaugh situation. This and that. So, no comments. Interesting. Next, uh, live updates. Washington football team announces Commanders. That's his new name. It, that generated a bit of conversation. The Commanders. The Commanders. Okay. All comments would be great. Thank you. Stop with the relevant thing. They're all relevant. Except for mine. Leland Albertson out of Iowa says, Swampers would have been better. Drain the swamp in D.C. <laughs> Leland also adds, uh, still be the Redskins to me. Yep, they'll still be the Redskins to him. The new logos have been terrible lately. No thought or creativity. I couldn't agree more. Um, kind of like lo kind of like music the last 20, 20 to 25 years. It's lame, uh, and it sucks. It actually sucks. Um Logos have been lame. Uh, yeah, like the Seattle Kraken logo, I think it's lame. I'm not, I, I don't know, it looks too much like the Mariners, too. It's not that great. The name is cool. The logo's lame, the, the new hockey team. Golden Knights is okay. I like that one just fine. Um, and the uniform's actually really nice. Seattle doesn't do it for me. Um, but I guess nothing in Seattle does it for me except the Supersonics back in the day. Those were nice. But that was then. That was then. Uh, let's go back to, uh, yeah, and obviously TV and movies and stuff. No thought or creativity at all. For, again, 25 to 30 years, in my point of view, it's been a long time. Um, hope no one finds the Vikings insensitive. Yep, since they raised terror and brutality to the English people. Yeah. And quite frankly, every group has done this and done that. Um, every group has had things happen. You know, it's just... I don't know. That's why I'm not. I, I don't get into. Yeah, I, I'll just leave that where it is. Uh, Mark Carlson says also out of Iowa says Leland. That has been my fear for some time now. As sports team names have had to change in the name of wokeness. Exactly. That's what I don't get into is is wokeness. I don't. Sorry if that offends some of you listening. It's just not for me. I'll just leave it at that. Eric Mostert, South Dakota, says, I was kind of getting used to the Washington football team. And, you know, it, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I think the uniforms were actually better. 
I think they were better. There's Tony Coleman, South Dakota says, there was some kind of old-timey charm that went along with the football team. I like it. I did too, you know? I did. And you could kind of make up a name as you went. Like I called them the Washington Gophers, the Washington Golden Gophers, or the Washington Ws. I had fun with it, you know? Where you could just make something up. The Red Tails, which I kind of, I think I would have liked that more. And if it's going to be Commanders, it would probably be a little more interesting than just a W. You know, a W. Just like the Houston, the Houston Texans, the name sucks, but the logo is actually kind of decent. And then the Titans, it's the opposite. The name is, the name is pretty cool, but the logo is, it's a T. It's it's a freaking T. Like a, a T instead of like a muscular, it's a T. Like, that's lame. That's lame, man. Next, uh, Mark Carlson says, I agree with what is said here. Washington football team might be generic, but it's, but in its simplicity, it has a style, like Ham's beer, your grandpa drank it. Hey, yeah, exactly. You know, that is a perfect, perfect analogy. Mark Carlson, way to go. And, yep, Tony, I, I'm with you 100%. Mark Carlson says, that is interesting because the other DC football team, XFL, was named the Defenders. Yeah, that is kind of funny. Uh, kind of weird. I lived in, oh, wow, you lived in the DC area. Oh, yeah, I mean, you were in the, yeah, he was in the military, Mark Carlson. I lived in the D.C. area for years, spending lots of time working in support of a five-sided building. Ooh, Pentagon? <clears throat> yeah. Buried, buried one of my friends in Arlington? Wow. So from that view, I get it. There was a better name. I mean, was there a better name? I don't know. And why in the world did it take so long? Yeah, two years is a long time. Well, it's D.C., and that should say a lot, where they just bleep around and they make everything, they put everything off. Will more teams be forced to bow to the wokeness? Probably. It's happening elsewhere. Like, I bet the Atlanta Braves, probably. And, yeah, probably. Maybe even the Chiefs. All this, oh, oh, I mean, I thought they didn't like that. And just like the uh, North Dakota Fighting Sioux, they're called the Fighting Hawks now. That was the, you know, college hockey and all that. Um... Yeah, Mark said it's happening elsewhere. Say goodbye to Edmonton Eskimos and hello to the Edmonton Elks, for example. You know, that isn't the worst name ever, but again, it's, yeah, it's everywhere. Elks and, and uh, well, not elks, but like deer and stuff, like the Iowa Heartlanders. You probably know a thing about that. That's the ECHL hockey team in Iowa, the AA club, where the AAA is AHL, the Iowa Wild, which is also lame because it's the same name as Minnesota Wild. Why would you have the same name and similar logo and all that um, and color scheme? Where Heartlanders, it's a cool name, but it's a deer again. Um... And that's a CFL team for those of you who are unfamiliar. Uh, the Edmonton Elks. Yep. Okay. Yep. I have been to the old RFK Stadium. Yeah, that's an oldie. And watched the Redskins play. The fans are fanatics. I can only imagine that ripping the name off the team has somehow neutered the fans. As a football fan myself, this name change feels like the team left town in the middle of the night and these are the replacements. Kind of like the Colts, right, many years ago. Uh, and maybe Joey... The Colts from Baltimore to Indianapolis, that is. And maybe, Joey, they should have tried that that name. Sorry for going so long. I guess I had a lot to say. School. And I am very appreciative of what you said. That was pretty good. I respect that a lot. Um, Mike Dale, New York, uh, New York, uh, upstate New York, part of me, says, Ha ha, commanders. Commanders of what exactly? How boring, generic, and half-assed, kind of like our elected leaders from both sides of the aisle. Yeah, I, I, I understand that too, Mike, I, I do. Um, that work, that quote-unquote work there, <laughs> yeah, they are, those are the ones that work there, both sides of the aisles. So much rich history with that franchise. Their fans deserve so much better with a more creative and dynamic team name and logo. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have liked something with an airplane, you know, this and that, or even like a uh, aircraft carrier, something cool, you know, something cool. Uh, the pentagrams. <laughs> okay, that'd be really bad. Uh, not pentagon, but pentagrams. That'd be so bad. Oh my God, that'd be bad. Today he sums it up with a simple but uh, very accurate statement here. Bit of a meh name. Don't hate it. Don't love it. Yeah, because commanders, there's a coolness to it, but then it's like, eh, you know what I mean? Dub Brothers with a zzz, like sleeping. Mike Dale responds to, hail to the commanders. Hail victory. We're hiding in our bunkers ordering others to fight for old D.C., and then blah, throwing up. Yep. 
Yep. Next. Oh, good, good. Thank you guys for that. And yeah, it, yeah. When a team changes its name, it's it's interesting. The uniforms are worse than they were during the Washington W's. You know, the Washington football team. They're worse. They're worse. Yeah, they're worse. The W's uniforms are actually more interesting. They were. Yep. And now they really are the Washington W's. That's the funny part. They are the Washington W's now. <laughs> Next. Yankee William <laughs> responding to when it says Vikings choose Rams. Kevin O'Connell as their head coach from the Star Tribune. And we get some comments there, which is good. Yankee William out of Brooklyn Center, if he's still there, says, I was looking for the Harbaugh news all, yeah, me too, all day just to be disappointed. Hope this is real and not another heartbreaker. Yep, I, I hope Kevin O'Connell works out. I really do. Dave Hickey, Iowa, says, I'm definitely not a fan of Jim Harbaugh. That being said, I wanted him because he's a winner. But his downfall sounds like his personality, and I'm guessing he would have been hard to work with. KOC is probably just what the owners wanted and should be a lot easier to work with for Cam. <laughs> K-A-M, yep. Uh, and, of course, I'm all in with this staff. Yep, I mean, let's let's go for it. Jerry Hicks says, is this for sure? And I guess it is. I, I, I guess so, probably. If things went the other way, we'll see. Um, Gerald String says, on board, Generation New School, great job. Generation New School with the coaching. Yeah, with music, uh, hell no. But obviously, I don't think Gerald meant that. <laughs> no, he didn't. No way. Um, modern music sucks. <laughs> Gerald String says, getting the management assembly assembled early. I like that. Not waiting for six months. Yeah, that's for sure. Leland Albertson says, terrible. Prove me wrong. All right. They, they're going to have to. Yep, they're going to have to, and they're going to have to prove us all wrong uh, at the end of the day. Uh, from the Athletic, Jim Harbaugh to Kevin O'Connell, an inside look at a shocking day amid the Vikings coaching search. Very, very interesting article. Um, I forget who was working with Johnny K. I apologize for that, but of course, uh, Mike Feller, Stu Evans, out of South Dakota, says, works for me. Leland Albertson says, another blown or missed opportunity. Look forward years of, uh, to years of mediocrity, I guess I should be used to it. Only 50, my 50th year as a fan. Wow. Yep. This is my 30th. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you a bit. Another one says, uh, yep. The Chargers named Ryan Ficken, the special teams coordinator. And I made an inaccurate statement in terms of like, we just had him. No. Well, yeah, we had him as special teams coordinator for a year. He's been in the organization for years, Ryan Ficken, but, um, he should have been, he should have gotten the job instead of Maloof apparently. Yeah. I mean, obviously, cause he was really good. He's the best special teams we had forever. And he's gone in one year to the San Diego Chargers. Ugh. Leland Robertson says, keep shipping away at what's good with the team and leave what's left in the toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. I believe this is the last one. Okay. Yep. Where I talked about an open invitation for anybody that wants to create a new Purple Mafia logo. Make note, the idea is to not have the Minnesota Vikings logo in it anymore. So if there's multiple, I may end up having to choose one. So, yeah, I mean, why not? Um, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> graffiti character and background. Interesting. Hmm. Yep, Dave Vicky just posted something there. Is there a reply? Uh, Dave Vicky says, I had a different character highlighted that looked a little bit more like you, Joey, but I couldn't figure out how to print it. Not a computer guy, Mafia guy with purple and gold suit on, and I have the purple Mafia words in gold. I think just a thought. Yeah, because I'm, yeah, I'm not a graphics person. I'm just not. I could be. I have a mind for it. For what I like, but I'm just I just don't know how really, and I probably should. Is there an image here? Uh, I'm clicking on it to see what's there, and it's saying sign in for this, sign in for that. Uh, well, I hope it's not this this guy. <laughs> no, that would definitely not be uh, something I'd be interested in. <laughs> the guy that they're showing, I don't know, but I don't think that was what he was. It's like them. Yeah, no, I don't like that guy. <laughs> No, I, I don't. <laughs> so, and obviously, like, I'm going to have to choose, uh, obviously, if there's more than one, of course. Well, and if I don't like it, I'm not going to make it, uh, what you call it. Yeah, I, I don't do the hoodie thing. No, I'm, I'm no, I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't like hoodies anyway, but I just don't do the hoodie thing. So with that said, that should wrap up the uh, Facebook and the Twitter account, the fan interaction, that should wrap up the show for now. Apologize if it was kind of weird, kind of an odd show, dancing around a bit, but, well, we have a new coach, and now we'll wait and see what's next. Obviously, you got to wait for the Super Bowl to end, and then you got to wait for the uh, new guys to come in, and the new uh, coaching staff. We'll see if uh, 
Andre Patterson sticks around. I hope he does, but we'll see. I'm a fan of Andre Patterson's. I don't think he's going to be the defensive coordinator, but uh, we'll we'll see. I mean, defensive line coach again, or defensive assistant? I don't know. Like, who knows? Maybe he'll still be an assistant head coach. I don't know, but I, I, I like him. I like what I heard when he was on Dan Barrero during the course of the season when Barrero wasn't just talking vaccine to vaccine with Barrero. There was a little bumper to bumper with Barrero mixed in as well uh, with a little toy department, as he calls it. That means talking about sports instead of just A section stuff and quite frankly, E section and D section and this section and that section uh, other than yeah sports. I'd rather have C section with sports. Uh, a and B section doesn't do a whole lot for me anymore. In fact, it just, I don't know, it's just, eh, especially considering who is doing the writing and commentating in the A section. I'm not a huge fan. Um, with that said, that should wrap up the show. Really thank you. Please tell your friends about the show. Please uh, follow the Twitter account. Jump on board with the Facebook page. Comment with me. Interact with me. Uh, call into the show with an audio submission. That's uh, Basically what you do is open up your free uh, open up your free voice recording application that's on every smart device on the planet open it press record talk into it like a phone call then when you hit stop you save it and share it slash email it to paladino live at yahoo.com paladino live at yahoo.com that would then convert it into an mp3 file thanks to zumzar.com really appreciate what they do also if you could rate the show on apple podcasts stitcher or Audible, you can rate it there with a review. I believe you, it's a, uh, there's a review for sure on Apple and Stitcher, but also Spotify, you can rate it with like five stars, one one to five stars. Please, if you could give me a five-star rating, I'd greatly appreciate it. All of you that have in the past, thank you so much on like Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts so far. Thank you so much for those of you that have. Until next time, though, uh, hopefully the Cincinnati Bengals can pull this off. Unfortunately, I'm picking the Rams, but uh, we'll talk about that when the time comes when we see who is, uh, you know, we'll see who it is, uh, who's standing last and holding the Lombardi. And we can hear that awesome song. And uh, eventually we'll work our way towards uh, the next coaching staff and the State of the Vikings 2022 and all that good stuff. Until next week, take care, enjoy, and go Bengals.